بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين بعد السلام عليكم الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى revealed a book القران الكريم to a messenger سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and then made that messenger عليه الصلاه والسلام a means of understanding that book ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمه and he teaches them the book and the wisdom the wisdom being the sunnah and the Prophet ﷺ had students who were known as the companions, the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, who took the Qur'an and recorded it, who took the tradition of the Hadith, the Sunnah, and passed it on, and it was recorded by the future generations. And we have therefore a requirement for a chain of transmission, a connection. Now, today in the 21st century Gregorian calendar and the 15th century Hijri calendar, we have between us and the Prophet over 1400 years. Um, and there seems to be a missing link. When we hear things like it's in the Quran, the Sunnah, I need to prove from the Quran and Sunnah, we are committing a massive mistake, a gross error in our thinking, in our methodology. And this is the missing link that has now plagued this Ummah and given us an uh, incorrect understanding of our faith and how to practice our faith in particular, orthopraxy. And that is that we think we can understand the Quran and Sunnah by removing the tradition of scholarship of that 1400 years, including the Sahaba themselves, the first generation, second generation and third generation of Muslims, all the way through every era of scholarship, of systemization, of scrutiny, of reviewing, of scholarship that was at the highest levels, of the most authentic levels and of high caliber and uh, erudition and depth of thinking and critical thinking. All of that has been scrapped and we are now asked to interpret the Quran and Sunnah by ourselves. What does the Quran and Sunnah say? Give me a proof of the Quran and Sunnah. What has qualified us to make these statements? Or seek the answer from somebody living, another human being, who knows the Quran and Sunnah. We want to bypass this 1400 years of the tradition that gave us Islam in itself, that gave us the Quran, that gave us those hadith. These people didn't merely pass that tradition on in terms of a transmission. And it wasn't just words that were passed on. Those 1400 years contain hundreds of thousands of volumes of Islamic literature, of Islamic thought, philosophy, arts, of course the jurisprudence and the usul al-fiqh, the theories of Islamic law, the ulum of the Qur'an, the disciplines that are required to approach and understand the Qur'an, high levels of learning and scholarship of the masters of these sciences. And today we have the audacity to bypass them, this is the missing link that is now causing the problems we see in society. Muslims are weak in their faith. They don't know the proofs for the beliefs in God and his existence and his attributes or why we believe the Prophet to be truthful and him to have authenticity and be a true final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we've cut out that tradition. That tradition needs an explanation, needs scholarship that has clarified and put into words we understand what is in the Quran and Sunnah. This is why the Prophet himself said وسلم, every hundred years Allah will send a mujaddid, a renewer. Somebody who does what then? There's no innovation or new religion that comes forward every hundred years. It's the same Islam. What the tajdeed is, is a way of presentation, a way of showing us and teaching us in our current contemporary environment and setting and methodology and technology how we understand this faith what this faith is what was written in books a thousand years ago is not accessible to the masses today a tradition of scholarship is needed the prophet was emphasizing scholarship great men and women every hundred years it was a continuous process this at least outlines that we cannot bypass these people and there's thousands and thousands of them by the way but of course one may stand out more than the other every so often, one great scholar every few decades or so who becomes notorious, who becomes who becomes oft quoted and relied upon and so on and so forth. The tradition doesn't revolve around one person, it's a group of scholars, 
but one of them may present the religion in a beautiful and easy and simplified way for the people of that time. And some may even present it in such a way where it carries on being accessible to the masses for centuries to come. Example being Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali. I mean, the way he wrote his books uh, and presented Islam and the discourse is very accessible, most of it is very accessible to most Muslims, people who can read and understand. Some of it, of course, is technical and requires scholarship and learning and time. But the purpose here is that we need to go back to this tradition. We need to go back to the Quran and Sunnah through the lens of the scholars, through the books of the scholars explaining the Quran and Sunnah. A Quran comes with tafasir, books of Quranic exegesis by scholars like Imam al-Tabari and Imam al-Qurtubi and Imam Fakhradin al-Razi and coming to our times, people like Imam al-Alusi and Sheikh Tahir ibn Ashur al-Tunisi rahimallahu al and likewise the hadith collections come with commentaries by ulama throughout the centuries Imam Nawawi's Minhaj uh, Shar Sahih Muslim uh, Ibn Hajr al-Sqallani and Imam al-Aini's commentaries on Sahih al-Bukhari and so on and so forth we bypass all of that tradition and we just take the hadith just take the Quran and think we can understand and do better than those that came before us for thousands of years this is just outright insanity you know it's very disturbing to think that people would buy into this concept and bypass such an important part of our faith in fact i would say now we don't even know the history of those 1400 years we all learn the seerah the life of the prophet how many of us know the lives and times of the Khulafa al-Rashidun? The 30 years where Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ali were leading this Ummah and what happened around the Muslim world and the expansions. You know, those who've attended courses and read a little bit will know, but the majority of Muslims have a, a gap here. It's, it's, it's an emptiness. How do you know your identity and your tradition if you don't know the history? Let alone the history of the Umayyads, for another hundred years or so, and then the Abbasids, and within the Abbasids, all the various uh, empires, if you like, that came up, or states such as the Ayyubids, the Zengids, uh, you know, and all across like Africa and Asia, and later on the Seljuks, and then the Ottomans. We don't know this history. We don't know what happened. We don't know who the luminaries were, who the scholars were, who the generals and commanders were, who the you know physicians were, and the philosophers were, and the tradition of Islam and how it spread in the arts and sciences that developed across the Muslim world from Islamic Spain all the way to China, all the way to places like Malaysia, Indonesia, to places like Baghdad in the central lands, Beit al-Hikmah. You know, we've lost that connection to this tradition. And the only way we're going to be successful is to go back to our tradition and rectify ourselves through the methodology that was presented to us by the most learned of people, the scholars of Islam, and to follow in their footsteps. To follow in the footsteps of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the footsteps of the, those who inherited from them, the inheritors of the prophets, the ulama. May Allah give us that strength and tawfiq to rectify ourselves in order to rectify our communities. Often we want to change the world and do all these big grand projects, yet we don't look after ourselves and do the individual project of my soul and my life and, and even my family you know that area you really have a big influence in you can make something amazing of without having to go to you know conferences and do big projects and spend tens and thousands of pounds and and you sacrifice your life and time if you invest in your family and yes you may have to invest some money and time and effort and you work on yourselves and you set up a positive environment a productive environment then your children and everybody's children will be the future that will be that change so let's think about this and let's think about that tradition that really we've been cut off from this is very dangerous and i hope that we can start looking into history looking into scholarship looking into how we got the religion of islam presented to us today this is really important and we need to understand that we have to rely on other human beings for Islam. This is not a, this is the life, right? The Sahaba relied on the Prophet Sallallahu The Tabi'een, where did they get the Quran from? It didn't fall out of the sky. It didn't come out of you know nowhere. It was the Sahaba that passed it on to the Tabi'een. They trusted a generation before them. It's a whole group of scholars, of learned individuals, of you know people of high morality and ethics 
and integrity and so on and so forth right we take from the udul we take from the udul the upright people of each generation which is why everybody was scrutinized and why you have to scrutinize and look at who you're taking your religion from that chain is something we can never cut out and to cut it out is to lose our faith is to disconnect from the true religion of Islam that came from the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba and was passed down to us and without taking Islam through that methodology we might be given a very theoretical and almost impractical way of Islam and living as a Muslim which actually will harm us May Allah give us the tawfiq to go back to our roots and tradition in the correct way Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa